and I mean, you could look and there's probably more wiggle warts floating around than uh, almost any other bait out there on the market. There's several reasons to me that make you know, this wiggle wart so popular. The way that it hunts in the water, the action, and I'm a big believer in water vortexes and the way that a bait presents itself and moves through the water. And I think just the way that the water moves around a wiggle wart, the way it comes off the back, when those fish are tracking it, it triggers those strikes. They feel it. It feels extremely realistic to those fish. Uh, and I think that's why it's been so successful. Fishing a wiggle wart is no different than fishing any other crankbait. And when I say that, what I mean is that I want that bait bumping into the cover, getting stuck where it shouldn't be getting stuck. <laughs> there we go, we got it off. But it's really important to come in contact with that cover. I don't mind getting stuck every once in a while because I know that I'm in the strike zone that way. I want that bait deflecting off of the cover. And one thing I'll do with the wiggle wart, especially early, early in the year, and I did this in the 2013 Classic, is that I'll fish this bait extremely shallow, shallower than it's designed to fish. And what that allows me to do is fish it extremely slow. So I can still stay in contact with the bottom, but I'll fish it up there in that three or four foot. And so keeping it in contact with the bottom I actually almost have to force myself to slow down and just barely creep this bait up and over the rocks. So I can fish this bait almost as slow as you would fish a football jig or a shaky head or something like that. But I can give those fish a completely different look that they've never seen as well as with the added benefits of that wiggle wart action. And nine times out of 10, when I'm fishing a wiggle wart, it's gonna be around some type of rock cover. So when I find that rock, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is a lot of times I'm 45 in a bank. You know, I'm casting at 45 degree angles. I'm gonna get that bait up there, shallower than what it's gonna run. And I'm gonna start that bait, I'm gonna get it down there. And as soon as I start to feel that rock, I'm gonna just kind of slowly work this bait over the rock, let it kind of create its own action, right? It's, the bait's already hunting, it's going back and forth side to side, and so it's constantly banging off different rocks, and it looks like a little crayfish kind of scurrying, trying to get away from itself. A lot of times when I make that cast, I really pay attention to what that wiggle wart's doing down there on the bottom, and that's gonna tell me a lot about how the bottom composition is, you know, where the bigger rock is. I can actually tell where the bigger chunk rock is or I can tell where there's a break. A lot of times those fish will set up on that first little steep drop because that's where those fish will position a lot, especially early in the years, those first drops, those first breaks right before those spawning flats. And I can feel that wiggle where it'll be grinding, 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 and then all of a sudden it kind of trips over itself and you don't feel that rock. And that tells me that there's a steep angle change in the rock and that's where I'm gonna concentrate. So I'll kind of continue to make repeated casts back to that same angle, the same stretch of bank, to try to get those fish to fire and trigger because early in the year when the water temps are cold, you gotta make repeated casts sometimes to trigger those fish, play with angles. A lot of the wiggle wart fish I catch, oh, right there on big points like that, you get those transition changes. Oh, that's a big one too. Oh, stay on there you get those transitions with those little points and you get that rock. Oh gosh. And you can catch some giant fish. Fishing those little rock transitions, keying in on those points, those little drops. You look at this fish's eyeballs and you see actually on, on both sides, this fish, I, I don't know what it is, but they're kind of milky. It's almost like that fish is blind and it's really important a lot of times to have a bait like that wiggle wart that's gonna move a lot of water. We talked about those water vortexes that come off. A hard charging bait, a hard thumping bait like that, a lot of times in dirtier water conditions, get that spring runoff. A lot of times that's what these fish need, especially one when she's a little bit blind and beat up like that. 